thanks for dropping in. Last week I revealed the 3D printed 6 alarm puzzle box, my newest puzzle design. Today I'll show you how to build your own copy. And as always, the project files are free to download and print. Just check the video description for the link. For the most basic version of the puzzle, you'll need to print a top case, a bottom case, a top core, a bottom core, a lock, a front cap, a front cap ring, two side caps, two bolt heads, two dials, two latching bolts, and two bolt tracks. That is a lot of parts, but these are really easy to print. There's no need for support material, and each individual part is small enough to fit most printers. For my copies, I use 10% gyroid infill. That's a little lighter than my usual settings, but it saved enough material to get five completed puzzles out of a single one kilogram roll. In addition to the 3D printed parts, we'll need super glue, six M3 bolts that are anywhere from 12 to 24 millimeters long, and 24 three by three cylinder magnets. If you don't have the magnets on hand, the puzzle can technically work without them. It'll just lack some satisfying tactile feedback. All right, we've got everything laid out, so let's get to building. First, we'll assemble the port mechanisms that sit on both sides of the puzzle. Find the two dial pieces. They look like this. And press fit six 3x3mm magnets into each one. All the magnets should face the same direction. Be sure to double check that as you go. The holes are intentionally tight, so I use the flathead screwdriver to press the magnets all the way in. If your prints are too loose, add a drop of super glue to keep the magnets in place. A wandering magnet could jam the puzzle. Okay, both dials are done. Now we'll add a second layer of magnets, which we'll use to press the side cap on, like so. This trick helps guarantee that all the magnets will face the right way. Again, add glue if there's any sign that the magnets might come loose. Now we'll drop a bolt head into each side cap. Note that I'm intentionally not gluing this piece. That way it will be free to rotate and distract the puzzle solver. Next we'll take a bolt track and slide on a dial so that the magnets are facing the thinner end. We're going to force a side cap onto the assembly to hold everything together. But before we do, add the smallest drop of super glue here and here. Do not overdo the glue or the assembly will become fused and well, you'll have to start all over again. Now carefully push on the side cap and press firmly until it won't go any further. And now we'll repeat the process for the second assembly. Next, we're going to add the latching bolts, but it's important to install this the correct way. The side cap has a little embossed circle with a gap, and the latching bolts has a bump on one side. We want to line up that bump with the gap. Now rotate the inner dial clockwise to pull the latching bolt in. The side assemblies are complete, so let's move on to the simpler front outlet. All we need to do is glue this front cap ring into the front cap. There's only one way it will fit, so if the ring slides into place, you've got it right. While the glue is setting, let's work on the outer case. The top case connects to the top half of the core. That's the piece that has two holes near the center. Line up the two parts and secure them with two M3 bolts. The bottom case connects to this ring-shaped lock, but before we combine them, check that the bolt holes in the bottom case are clear. Depending on your printer, you may have a few wisps of filament or a solid layer of plastic blocking the bottom of the hole. A strong poke with an Allen key or nail should clear the way. It's really easy to connect these two parts the wrong way around. When properly installed, the small notch in the lock will point away from two holes cut into the inner wall of the bottom case. Keep that orientation in mind as we continue. The lock slides into the bottom case at an angle. It can then be rotated and pulled into two small tracks carved into the bottom case wall. Now we just secure this connection with two more M3 bolts. The glue from earlier should be set, so we can switch back to assembling the puzzle core. Find the bottom core, which has a long slot carved into its floor. This piece also has some countersunk bolt holes that you may need to puncture, so make sure those paths are clear before we go any further. 
Now we'll add the front cap in both side assemblies to their perfectly shaped slots. If the side assemblies don't fit, make sure you've fully retracted the latching screws by rotating the dial clockwise. Or, it's possible that they're not rotated correctly. There's a certain keyed slot that they both need to slide into, so rotate it a little bit until it falls into place. Next, we'll lock everything in place with the top core and secure it with our last two M3 bolts. The puzzle is assembled, although it's currently in a fully solved state. We could lock it up using the solution from the last video, but there's an optional bonus puzzle I'd like to add to this print. If you want the more complicated version of the puzzle, you'll need a secret lid and six 6x3mm magnets. Two of the magnets are installed in the bottom of the case. Contrary to what you might expect, we want these magnets to point in opposite directions, so be careful as you glue them in place. Inside the secret door, you'll find holes for two more magnets. If properly positioned, these magnets will pull the secret door toward the bottom case, but only when the door is positioned like this. That's why we intentionally installed those base magnets in opposite orientations. The secret door also has a single magnet hole that runs laterally through the base. This is pretty deep, so you'll need to use an Allen key or some other tool to press the magnet home. And finally, we'll install the last magnet in this small hole found in the slot in the bottom of the core. This magnet should be oriented to pull the secret door toward it. Now slide the door in and check that the magnets are properly holding it up against gravity. If everything's lined up correctly, you'll be able to retrieve the secret door by placing it above the base like this and sliding it out gently. With that bonus step out of the way, we can lock up the puzzle by following the standard solution backwards. I'll run through it quickly here, but you can check last week's video for a more detailed view. Both side outlets are fully retracted and the front outlet is rotated. We'll slide the top of the puzzle onto the base and rotate the front port to set the first lock. Now we'll lock the side ports by rotating the inner dial's six magnetic clicks counterclockwise. If both side ports are correctly aligned relative to each other, they'll mesh and the puzzle will be fully locked. I now have a couple dozen of these done, and I promise it's actually a lot quicker to build when you're not trying to describe the process. But best of luck to everyone who takes on the challenge, both assembling and solving the puzzle. So until next time, happy printing, and thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Since you did, I have another model for you. Believe it or not, it's the second Hydrant themed design. You see, my nephew liked the puzzle box, but he wanted something a little easier to get into. So this is a simple screw top container. It's using my newer thread designs, so it's easy to print and easy to use. Whether you're looking for a complicated puzzle or just a simple themed container, I hope one of these models will work for you. All right, see you next time.